TNT is an old but still really fun and useful block in Minecraft. So in this video, learn everything about it from duplicators to TNT mining, traps, and more. So of course, the big question would be, how do you actually craft TNT inside of Minecraft? Well, first, of course, we need an explosive substance, and we can get that from creepers that spawn basically anywhere if it's dark. There's also some other ways of getting gunpowder, like let's say witch farms, and of course, ideally, your best solution would be a dedicated creeper farm. Then inside of a desert or a large beach biome, you want to collect a whole bunch of sand. And to craft TNT, we need four sand and five gunpowder per one piece of TNT, which definitely doesn't make it an incredibly cheap block. However, of course, as well as being able to craft TNT, you can also find it some places. And that structure is also in the desert, it is the desert temple. And basically right underneath these chests here, we have some TNT. There is technically one other place in the game that has TNT generate added as well, and that is this one super rare room inside of the Woodland Mansion. Okay, so now we have a decent amount of this item, but how do we actually use it, and how does TNT work? Well, TNT when set off will then turn into an entity, it'll flash for a little bit, and eventually it'll explode. When it explodes, it drops every single block that it breaks, if it's a block, of course, that wouldn't require silk touch. This did not used to be the case, and so because of that, it's quite useful, but because it does turn into an entity, it can actually fall down. So for instance, this piece of TNT in the air when lit will suddenly drop downwards. And of course, if you're close to it, you can definitely take a lot of damage from TNT explosions. Any method that gives it a redstone signal will ignite it. So for instance, right here it's ignited, but also things like let's say a fire charge can light those off. And of course, the famous use of flint and steel. If you crouch and right click on there with your flint and steel, the fire will go on top of that, which basically gives you a time to fuse, which I think is actually incredibly cool little easter egg. You can have timed fuse TNT. Of course, also redstone torches would set that off because they do provide that redstone source. And you can make some really cool fuses with redstone dust, having a signal travel from a torch or a lever onto your TNT, like let's say right here. We now have a fairly decent distance that we can go to from here, and it'll make that one light off. You'll notice once that one TNT lit off, the other TNT were then ignited. That's because TNT caused other TNT next to them to ignite. You can make amazing chain reactions this way. So for instance, right here, if we light this one TNT, it should make all these TNT go off in a row. That TNT enables that TNT, which enables that one, so on and so forth. If they're within enough range, they make this chain of explosions. You can also use TNT to push TNT or other entities. So for instance, if we light this TNT, then light this TNT and go away, you'll notice the first TNT actually explodes the other TNT before that one moves. But that is not the only type of TNT in Minecraft, there is also the TNT minecart. TNT minecarts work a bit differently and are definitely more expensive. You want to start by crafting minecarts, which are 5 iron apiece. Once you have a whole bunch of those, then put TNT and minecarts in the crafting grid, and in this fully shapeless recipe, that'll then convert these minecarts into TNT minecarts. Something to be aware of is that you can no longer get back the TNT and the minecart individually when breaking it, and so because of that, these minecarts and TNT are then permanently fused. So the thing about them is they're incredibly volatile and will explode at the slightest thing. So for example, if we have a TNT minecart over an activator rail, there's a really interesting functionality here, which is basically that the TNT minecart will explode with a certain power in proportion to how fast it goes over this activator rail. If we push it really quick over that that activator rail, its explosion should be decently quick, whereas if it very very slowly goes over that, the explosion will be much less. So for instance, just like that, you'll notice it ignites like a normal TNT inside the minecart. However, in a scenario like this, we can make pretty crazy traps, because basically you can put infinite TNT minecarts on the same block, and so if we have a ton of TNT minecarts inside of our inventory, we can simply right click on the rail with all of these, and just fill that all the way up, and then eventually for a trap, literally just flick a lever there, and all those TNT minecarts will blow up in an insane explosion like that. Basically nuclear proportions of blast. You can even see on the explosion here, it basically explodes as a singular entity. That TNT minecart did explode instantly. The question of course would be, why did it explode, as it was just over a powered rail? Powered rails do not make TNT minecarts explode, but TNT minecarts getting squished or touching each other can make TNT minecarts explode. However, if they drop, they do instantly explode when they reach the ground. Or for instance, right here we can push those all into each other and they definitely have quite a crazy explosion. 
So TNT minecarts are perfect for sort of instant explosions if you want them. They even work underwater, of course, and as long as you can kind of squish them into each other, you can get those to explode and have crazy effects. Just be aware this item can be insanely deadly. Let's start by talking about the funnest use of TNT as well as TNT minecarts, and that is by making traps. So a really good one of these is what's known as the TNT tree trap. What we want to do is start by at the base of this tree, placing a good amount of TNT. It doesn't have to be an insane amount, but I would say at least nine pieces. Then we want to go underneath the tree and place an observer that's observing this block of wood and place the TNT back, then surround the entire area in blocks so that you can't really tell that anything is under there. What'll happen then is someone will go up to the tree and they'll start mining it down as of course they're unaware of there being any issue. And when they break this bottom block, basically the trap will be activated. Now they will notice the observer so they do have a bit of time to get away, but it can still be a pretty good trap. But what are some ways to make that more deadly? Well, one way of making this more deadly is by using TNT minecarts. We want to start by doing is digging underneath the tree a fair bit. We're going to place an observer facing towards this bottom birch block, then have a piston underneath that, and underneath that piston we're going to have a redstone block, which means when this is activated the redstone block will be pushed down, but will not be retracted again when the observer stops being powered. Underneath here we're going to place down some powered rails like this so that it makes sort of a V shape, then we're going to break either side, and place back down the dirt so we just have it like this. And with all your TNT minecarts, place them on the side of this V shape, where the redstone block is. You can't place them on the other side, it has to be on this side. And once you've placed them all down, and of course the more you place down the deadlier it'll be, then just cover the entire area up again. Wait for it to be grown over with grass, and then when someone comes to chop down this specific tree, and of course making it a fairly easy tree to chop down is a good idea too, we break this bottom block, it will explode basically instantly after you break that bottom block. I'm in peaceful mode right now, so I wasn't killed by the explosion, but this is 100% death, even if you have, let's say, full netherite protection for blast protection for armor. So that's definitely a great TNT trap to make, and as well as that it does make this significant crater. Next, we have the very classic classic TNT sand trap. This is made with TNT, with sand above it, then a pressure plate. Someone would walk over the pressure plate and everything would fall down and explode. So you'd not only get trapped, but of course also there is that TNT explosion. And these can be made in fairly long lines, something like this. This is also fundamentally how games like TNT run work in Minecraft. So of course, how does this actually work for trying to turn it into a functional trap? Well, the first step is to pick a location that players go over, but it's also kind of hard to see things there. So for an example, maybe this block right here as there's some grass around it. Simply break a couple blocks around it, place down TNT above its sand, above the sand a birch pressure plate as it resembles sand texture the most, then underneath that just break it down a couple blocks and place down a water bucket, and then we can of course then go back up here with sand. What'll happen is you'll walk over this block, you'll fall down, you'll get trapped in here, and as you try and get out that TNT TNT will explode, which of course would kill you. There's also another variant of this that works better in jungly or forest areas, especially considering how dense the grass is in areas like this. And again, all you have to do is place down that piece of TNT, the gravity block above it, so for us we're going to use the concrete powder, and then you have to put down a pressure plate, the closest to green, being this warped pressure plate. Although this looks like a fairly easy to see trap to us, imagine going through this area at night, it's definitely not hard to imagine someone not seeing that that's there, then falling into the trap, getting stuck, and the entire area becoming exploded. And of course you can always make these way more dangerous by adding a ton of TNT, so that not only is there that one piece of TNT, there's actually a huge amount that the person needs to outrun, so basically if they do trigger that trap unintentionally around them, there's going to then be so much TNT, it'll be nearly impossible to actually get away from all of it. There's also other ways of setting up traps like this, like let's say underneath a villager house, we could place down a decent amount of TNT, and then have a pressure plate, and of course pressure plate being the same color as the wood type, no one's going to suspect a pressure plate being there. But of course 100%, the best type of TNT trap that you can make 
is just by placing a skulk sensor on top of those TNT blocks. And this can be fully concealed in an area, let's say even behind a wall in someone's base where they couldn't even tell it's there. Then they walk by, and by doing literally nothing, that skulk block will then activate those TNT. Now as well as being able to turn TNT into traps, you can also turn the strange item into a cannon. And of course you can even see that right there, it is blasting us up into the air, but we can have that blast TNT players or any other thing we want in different directions. We're going to start with a fairly harmless TNT cannon that I invented myself, and I call it a visual-only fireworks-like cannon. You want to start by placing down four dispensers in a pattern like this, then in the center placing down a bucket of water. Also inside of each dispenser, place as much TNT as you can. For me, I have these pre-filled with TNT, but of course if this is in survival, you couldn't actually put that much TNT in E. Then you want to place a repeater going into the bottom of each one of these, but there's no need to put it in the top one and those will turn on based on the power from the base dispenser then surround this in a circle of redstone on the edge of that place down a repeater put down a lever and flick that lever on that'll make the tnt go off once i would also recommend turning down your sound for most of these by a very large amount as of course the tnt is quite loud put a repeater right here and put down two repeaters next to it. Then over here, break and replace a piece of the redstone dust to make the super fast repeater clock. Flick this lever on to turn the TNT cannon on, and we now have this purely visual TNT launcher. As you can see right here what happens, it launches insane amounts of TNT into the air. If we turn up our FOV, we can kind of see what's happening here. They are going all the way into the air and sort of getting to their maximum distance very high up in the world here. We can even see those flying all the way up here, and then again, sort of just getting to this layer where they explode explode, but because they never stay at the base part of the world, but because they never explode anywhere near the TNT cannon, this thing is fully safe in terms of not exploding your world, it just is like a beacon that makes a huge amount of TNT go into the air. However, something really cool about this design is if you're in peaceful mode, so TNT does not cause any damage and you're inside of this, it can blast you alongside all that TNT all the way up into the air. Just beware to land back into the cannon's water. There are a ton of different ways to make TNT cannons, each one having the TNT go in different directions. For this TNT cannon, we're going to have 12 dispensers, 3 on each side, and then we're going to place redstone dust on top of each one of these blocks. And on the side of the TNT cannon, place an observer going this way, and an observer going the other way, and the TNT cannon is now live. You can see here what's happening, all the TNT is being dispensed towards the center, and it is basically going every single direction in an absolutely crazy amount of TNT. Now a cannon like this isn't necessarily the most directional, as you can see here we have literally tons of TNT going every direction, but it does also work as a player launcher if you're in the center of it. You can go pretty far away, and if we take a look around this world, there are TNT explosions basically everywhere going every direction. In fact, there'd be way more except for the fact that most of the TNT will explode inside the air. Everything we've been looking at so far with TNT has been somewhat unpractical uses, but this item also has a lot of really important uses in the game that I'm going to go over right now. So of course the first thing is, when the TNT explodes, blocks they do now drop 100% of their items and this is a big deal because this did not used to be the case and so because of that TNT was virtually useless for mining. But there is now also another difference which is that TNT drops 100% of the experience from the blocks that it breaks. So for instance right here it broke all those skulk and we now have a ton of XP on the ground. Of course something to be aware of always with these kinds of things is that the TNT explosions themselves can then of course destroy that experience but the idea would be, as long as you're only having one TNT go off at the same time, you're not going to have any experience or any blocks be permanently gone. They'll just be turned into their item form. So for instance, right here, we can have one TNT go off at a time, giving us a decent amount of XP, as well as, of course, any blocks that it breaks. So of course, also, if we want a huge amount of cobbled deep slate, we could also do that by randomly placing down a couple TNT every couple blocks. Because again, all those blocks that they break are going to turn into items, so we now have for ourselves a decent amount of cobble deep slate obtained basically instantly. So other than let's say blowing up skulk, what is this most useful for? Well the biggest thing fundamentally is netherite mining. I'm not going to of course go fully into how to use this for netherite mining, although I do have a video all about that. But basically how it works is you dig long tunnels along chunk borders, which can be seen by pressing F3 plus G on your keyboard if you're in Java edition. And then along these long tunnels what you want to do is basically place down the TNT 
in a strategic way. And this strategy is to TNT skip a block, and then to TNT skipping another block, making a pattern like this. This is the most efficient way of placing down TNT for this kind of mining. And so once we've run out of all of our TNT, we just light the first one by shifting and right clicking on it to give us a bit of time to run away. We then let that explode and that entire chain reaction of TNT is going to go off. If we look down here, we can kind of see that happening. It's exposing a ton of blocks. And already just over here, there is a piece of ancient debris. So granted, you have a creeper farm as well as a sand mining desert. This is a good method of mining ancient debris in the game, in fact technically the quickest. And you even get the XP and items from all the netherrack and other items you mined. Now you can technically also do this for overworld mining. What you'd want to do is go a little bit above the diamond strip mining layer so that you're not super near to bedrock, like let's say maybe Y-50 or 54 or something like that. Then fill a tunnel up with TNT. You could do it in the netherite mining configuration like this, or in a straight line. It's really whatever you want. I'd probably suggest a straight line, just because the blast resistance is much higher on this block. Then once you've done that, simply shift and right click on the end block, or even just right click on it directly to make it explode. Walk away and let all those blow up. Now, there is one difference, in fact one very big difference, between this and netherite mining. The ancient debris item cannot actually be destroyed by the TNT explosions, and so because of that you're not going to waste any of them, whereas this way it definitely can. So for instance right here, although we did find diamonds by exploding all these blocks, we have the issue, as a very few of the actual blocks that were exploded survived, as you can see here, many of the secondary explosions destroyed those blocks that fell off, but as well as that, this would also destroy the ores, so although we did expose this diamond ore over here, it did also explode some of those, which then does not give us the option for fortune. So it is a method of mining, but definitely not the best. And the final thing is that it is useful in auto farms. We might be wondering, well how is it that useful if TNT is expensive and you have to use a ton of it? Well that's because of one thing, that is TNT duplicators. And I'm going to show you how to make a really easy TNT duplicator that works in Minecraft Java Edition. So to make this, you're going to need a lever, a random building block, one fence, six slime blocks, one sticky piston, two observers, a piece of TNT, a dead coral fan of any type, a detector rail, as well as a minecart. You want to start by, of course, picking the right location to build this. For us, for instance, we're going to put it right above this bit of mountain we want to destroy, and then place your first block. You could also place down the TNT first if you want. It's whatever you want, just know the TNT will come out of about where this TNT is. Above the TNT, place down the oak fence, and put an L shape of slime blocks to the side of it here. And then over here, place another L shape of slime blocks and put the dead coral fan over here. Above this, you want to put the detector rail facing this direction and the minecart in there and a sticky piston that is facing towards this block here, and off of this sticky piston, put that random building block. Put the lever on there and we'll flick it on in a second, and then off of that you can put the two observers. And this is going to power this on, on and off, just like that, and you can see it is duplicating TNT. Obviously you'd have to be careful because initially these could go up and explode this, and then we can flick that lever to turn it off. The good news is too, you don't actually need the observers, you can do this fully manually, and you can't just break this by, let's say, flicking it in the wrong timing or anything like that. So this is a fully working TNT duplicator inside of Minecraft Java Edition. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this TNT guide. If you enjoyed it, make sure to explode the like button and subscribe to see more Minecraft guides like this. I'll see you in the next video and have a good day. Goodbye.